everyone. Just give you all a few moments to start coming on into the room, but I'd love if you guys could just put a one in the chat box if you can see the keep screen, just so I know that it's all sharing correctly and we can all see everything and that you can hear me as well. Excellent. Thanks, ladies. Appreciate that. I hope everyone's going really well this week. Um, I feel like things are starting to pick up maybe in some areas of life and return a little bit to maybe some of the good parts of normal that we're we're hoping we can have back again. Um, but I think in the meantime, something I'm noticing a lot when it comes to automation, when it comes to kind of setting up these processes in our business is we feel like we have to do everything at once very quickly and all at the same time. So what I thought with these webinars, what we might start doing, and this was a great um, suggestion last week, is just start breaking down some of these parts really in detail, just to give you a bit of confidence when you're going into things like Campaign Builder, which admittedly gives people the, the largest headaches really of any of the systems or any of the parts of the system, so that you're not feeling so overwhelmed when you get in there and it's not so um, stressful really, which it can be. The first time you open Campaign Builder, particularly if you've been given a campaign from someone else, I think it's not so bad if you've just got in there and you're just looking around and it's kind of a blank page, you don't really know where to start. But if you've got a campaign from someone else or when you've signed up, we've dropped in a campaign, the first time you see one, it does look very overwhelming. So we're just going to keep today nice and zen. We're going to go through the Campaign Builder together explain what the goals are, kind of some tips and ways around automation thinking, so how we can actually make the most of what we're looking at and how we can translate what it is we want for our customers or what we want to happen for our customers, how do we translate into the tech. So I have put a poll at the bottom. I did just want to get a kind of general idea of those of you who are using Keep Pro and those of you who are using Infusionsoft. The great thing is this tutorial or this um, webinar is going to relate to both of you equally. It's not going to be any different, but there are different ways, obviously, to get into Campaign Builder, depending on where you're using it, um, if it's Infusionsoft or Keep. So if you can answer that question in the poll just throughout the webinar, that would be great, just to give me a good idea of where we need to be focusing these webinars to. So... Where we're going to start is in Campaign Builder. So if you're using Keep Pro, you'll find it on the left-hand menu. And if you're using Infusionsoft, then you're going to find it in your top menu. When you drop down, you'll find it under Marketing. And it's your Campaign Builder there. So what we're going to do today is we're all going to start in a brand new campaign. So you don't need to find anything that's in there. We're just going to go to a new campaign, create your own. So I'm just going to get onto my Keep page myself. Now I've zoomed it in so hopefully you can see it all quite clearly. If there's any point where you can't see it or if it cuts out, just let me know and we'll jump back on. So if you're in Keep Pro, your campaign build is here on the left. Great, and we're going to just build our own brand new. Now before we kind of jump in, I do want to let you know that there are campaigns that are already built into Keep and Infusionsoft. So there's two ways to get to those. One is to go to the Infusionsoft marketplace. There you'll find campaigns that have been built already by other businesses that you can download for free. But sometimes it's useful to use the strategy guide as well. So in the strategy guide, basically, you it's kind of like a cookbook. If you've been using ClickFunnels, you will have seen that. I'll take you through that quickly. Just so you can see that you describe what you do. So maybe you're an online learning coach, you, you teach or you're a coach and consultant. Maybe you do local services or professional services. So let's say just looking at the group, I think predominantly most of you are coaches and consultants. And I'm really grateful. I'm seeing a lot of you come back week after week and it just makes me really happy to see you coming back in and I'm hoping that you're getting a lot out of these and that they're useful. So we can say I want to collect more leads or I want to follow up better with the leads I have. You can choose kind of what it is you're trying to achieve. So say we want to collect more leads. I think we all do. And here's three campaigns you can download straight away. So one is the free ebook download, which shows you how to create the landing page and to deliver a free ebook once someone asks for it how to set up a consultation request. So invite people to your calendar and a tip of the week series. So maybe you do 
like we've been doing our frequently asked questions. Maybe you have questions you get constantly that you want to run as a tip of the week. Um, and this can be done for an automated newsletter too. So it just gives you some options to play around and say we choose the tip of the week series. This means you're not always relying on other people to provide you with campaigns or to think from scratch every time. Sometimes it's fun and once you get in the habit of using this quite often, it will be easy to just make your own because you'll know where you're trying to get people to go. But sometimes if you just want to play with one that's here, it's already here. So we just have a landing page where they can opt in to receive it and then it takes them through an email and tag application sequence. And to get that, it's free, so we just click install. And that goes straight into your account. I just want to make sure you can actually see what I'm showing you. Ah, uh, you can only see the dashboard. Yeah. So one limitation we're having with Webinar Ninja is we see that sometimes it only shares the one screen. Although from what I can see here, it's showing up. So can anyone else see the tip of the week tab or is it just Amy who can't see it? Oh, yep. So the others can see it. So it may just be a buffering issue on your end, Amy. Sometimes it does happen with the internet. So yeah, it is there. And in the replay, if you couldn't see the screen, you'll be able to watch it back. So that's fine. Um, but thank you for letting me know because yeah, it's always good for us to see what's going on. So while we're here, you can see it's really easy to get free campaigns. They're going to explain how it works um, and things like that. But when we go back to creating our own, all we need to do in Keep Pro, and as I said, this is relevant for Fusionsoft as well, and you find it in the campaign builder just the same, you would go, instead of build your own, you would go to the strategy guide, and that exists in Infusionsoft as well. And they've moved this button recently, which is great, because you used to have to go to strategy guide and then build your own, which was very annoying. Now they've put it separately. So they are always trying to keep it a bit clearer. Um, so let's just create a new campaign. So we're going to say webinar example and the category might just be that we're testing, but we don't really need a category. We're going to save that. So in here, I want to walk you through all the things that we've got sitting on the left-hand side because I think the hardest part with Infusionsoft or Keep Pro when it comes to Campaign Builder is we just don't know what we don't know. We don't know what we can get out of this. We don't know the limitations. We don't know how much we can actually do until we see these things broken down. And it's very f difficult unless you spend a lot of time on your own to work that out, to understand what all of these do or what power it gives you. So a question I get a lot is when we're having our one-on-one -on -one chats or we're having conversations, as I say, Infusionsoft gives you a bit more power than what Keep Pro does. But Keep Pro, when you're using that tool, you're using pretty much everything you're paying for. Where with Infusionsoft, there's so much more you can do that's not relevant to a lot of you, but for bigger businesses that you're paying for and you're not using if you're at a certain stage. So when I talk about power, what I really mean is the ability to expand into other systems, to automate internal processes within your business. For example, syncing in your accounting and your um, team management. Maybe you want to create Asana projects or Basecamp projects from here. The power is kind of limitless when you understand how to use these goals and sequences. So the first thing I like to teach when it comes to Campaign Builder is how to think about what we're actually looking at. Really, when it comes to Infusionsoft and pretty much any automation tool or customer tool is we're thinking about if and then statements. So if someone downloads my ebook, then I want them to get five emails that introduce them to my business. Or if someone clicks the link in the email I just sent out, I want them to go into this sequence or this nurture. So maybe they clicked the link to show that they were interested in one product over another. Or you ran a survey and they clicked the button and said, I'm more interested in A than I am in B. So we want them to go into A instead of B. Things like that. So it's always when we're in the main screen, we're thinking if and then. Any if statement is a goal. Any then statement is a sequence. So if someone fills out my web form, then, and your then happens in the sequence. So the then might be we apply a tag and send an email. 
If they complete my landing page, then I want them to get the ebook they asked for. If they are tagged as being a client, they're no longer a prospect, but now they're a client, then I want them to be onboarded. If they click the link for my offer, but they don't buy, then I want to make sure they get nurtured until they do. If they open my email, but they don't act, or even if they just open the email, then that interest, we want to tag them as an engaged person, for example. And this applies to all of them. So if someone purchases your Keep or Infusionsoft product, if a purchase fails, this is where your accounts receivable can be automated. So someone's on a payment plan and their payment bounces and we want to remind them for the next seven days they need to make their payment, we can use failed purchase. Quote status. Now, this is within Keep only rather than Infusionsoft. The best way to explain this is if you move someone and you send them out a quote and they pay that quote or they um, read the quote or things like that, those statuses can trigger automations as well. This applies for web page automation, smartphones, someone completing a task, being moved from a lead to a prospect to a client, an API integration. I don't think I've ever used this one for anything in recent memory. Um, but that's if you need to integrate it with another system via an API call and WordPress opt-in. Now the WordPress opt-in is a plugin and it's a very useful plugin you can use to start capturing leads through your WordPress website using um, an opt-in form that is created in that plugin and it will pull them into the sequence using this goal. So are you all with me at the moment? Is that making sense? Great, you're all saying you can see everything. That's what I want to hear. Excellent. So when we start thinking about our goals, a basic one, and I'm just looking at the list, so I want to make sure I'm giving you stuff that's useful, but looking at the list of people I can see who are watching, many of you would be using ClickFunnels as well. You're not just using Infusionsoft or Keep. If that's the case, predominantly a lot of your campaigns for example, your opt-in page on ClickFunnels, so you're offering your free downloadable, is going to use a web form goal to get started. This web form goal allows you to capture the information through ClickFunnels into Keep and trigger automations from there. Another one you'll use very often if you're not using ClickFunnels is you may build through landing pages. So you may actually use Keep landing pages. If you choose to do that, I wish you all the best. <laughs> it's not impossible. I just find it a bit painful to use, um, but it can be done. And there are some templates in there you can use, which I'll take you through in a moment. So now we kind of have a basic understanding of what goals we can use. It's really important to understand placement of goals and how it actually behaves in your campaign builder. An example might be, Someone completes your ClickFunnels landing page and they say, yes, I want the ebook. So we're going to send them the ebook via email. And then we want to apply a tag saying that they've downloaded that ebook. A common mistake I see a lot of you doing is putting the tag here. So you like, and it, look, if you read it left to right, it makes sense. They're going to complete the web form. We're going to send them the ebook and then we're going to apply a tag. But what actually happens, and this is why it's so important to remember that if there's a then, so if they do this, then the then happens in the sequence. Because what this actually says is if they fill out the web form, we're going to send them some emails until they receive a tag on their contact record that says they have the ebook and then we're going to pull them out. So a goal on the left will start a sequence. A goal on the right will stop it. So as soon as the goal on the right has been achieved, it will pull them out of the sequence, which may mess up things that you're working on. The best example of where I would personally use this is if you are booking people for consultations through schedule once or through something else. So they were applied a tag was applied saying they booked a consultation with you 
we're going to send them reminders. No, let's try even a different one. The ebook that they asked for has been delivered. So they've had a tag applied saying the ebook was delivered. Then we want them to go into a nurture sequence for two weeks that reminds them to book a consultation with you because they haven't yet. But what happens if they book a consultation during that two weeks? We don't want them to keep getting emails begging them to book a call. So we would put the tag on the end so that when they have had that call scheduled, they stop receiving these emails because it will get annoying. Does that make sense? So a tag on the left will trigger a sequence and a tag on the right will pull them out of the sequence behind it. And you may see people have things built like this that will say, they asked for the ebook, it's been delivered. We're now going to nurture them to book a call. They've booked a call, so we're gonna pull them out of this sequence and we're gonna throw them into this one, which may just be reminders to show up for that call. So it's important that when you're just starting out, if you're unsure, don't put tags on the ends of things. How would it be different if we want to apply a tag though? So if we go back to our original example, someone's completed an, a web form on your landing page. So on ClickFunnels, they've said, yes, please, I want your ebook. They put their name and their email address. That information comes into Keep and now we want to send them an email and apply a tag. This is what happens in sequences. So if we look in our sequences, there's a few things we can manage in here. The first is when or how often are people going to receive either emails or have notes applied or appointments created? How often is this going to happen? Or how much of a delay are we going to put in between for that? So an example might be, as we said, someone has asked for the ebook and we want to send them an email and apply a tag. Two things need to happen here that will make one, your life a little bit easier and two, will help with your funnel. The first is that we need a delay timer. Now this is kind of debatable, but I always have a delay timer no matter what before I start anything, even if it's just for one minute. There's two reasons for that. One, you want the server to have time to catch up with what's going on because you're bringing information from ClickFunnels into Keep. So if you're saying the second that information hits Infusionsoft an email needs to go out, there's no lag time in between. We kind of want the server to have a chance to figure out what's going on. So with a delay timer, we might say minutes. We want the server to wait three minutes and then on any day, at any time, we're going to send out the ebook they asked for. The reason I say any day at any time is if someone overseas orders your ebook, you don't want them to have to wait until 8 a.m. on a weekday to receive it. We don't want any barrier. The other reason we have a delay timer at the beginning is if someone's moving through your funnel, we want them to have time to see everything else. Now, a lot of us don't buy on our computers anymore. We buy on our phones. So if I'm moving through a funnel sequence on my mobile and then I see a notification pop up that my ebooks arrived, I'm going to leave the funnel because I'm going to click on the ebook link. I'm going to want to press that notification to that email and I'm going to leave the funnel and I won't know how to go to get back there. So I'm not going to see the rest of the work you've put into creating the right up upsells or opportunities or your calendar because I've got a notification too early and I've left. So if you're running a funnel, maybe it's a consultation funnel or you're running a tripwire. So you're selling, you've got a free ebook and then a really cheap offer and then a free trial into your course or program. You're going to want there to be a longer delay than even three minutes. I would make it up to 10. And on your first page, after your opt-in page in the consult funnel or any funnel, you would say, thank you for downloading your ebook. It will be in your inbox in five to 10 minutes. And the reason we do that is so while they're on that page, we can do exactly what you've all seen before. While you're here, why don't you watch this video I made for you or read this letter I made for you, things like that. So we always need a delay. 
It just the length of time is determined by how long your funnel is. If you're just doing an ebook to a thank you page, so you just want to build your list, you're just worried about this while you build your portal or you're building out your course and your membership, then you would make sure that that's a lot shorter. Because if I ask for an ebook and it takes 10 minutes to hit my inbox, I'm going to think it's not working. So you kind of want to customize this to what you're doing. But now that we've got that delay, we can choose what's going to happen straight away. And that's we're going to send an email. And straight after, we're going to apply a tag because it doesn't matter what order these two things happen in. The tag doesn't impact anything or anybody. And the email is going to make sure they get that ebook they ask for. So you can see already, just by going to these level of steps, we've created your ebook sequence. This needs to be connected to ClickFunnels. Or if you're not using ClickFunnels, you would build a keep landing page. It's going to wait 10 minutes, then it's going to send the email and it's going to apply the tag. Now we've spent a little bit of time on email builder before, but if you're unfamiliar with it, I'll go through it for a moment in a second. But basically once you've created this email and you've attached your ebook, this can run automatically for as long as you like. The tag that we're going to apply might be downloaded, and what's an example? No, we're going for Zen today, aren't we? So let's say downloaded Zen ebook. Now, why would I put a tag here? Why is it important to me? The main thing for me is, one, I still want to make sure that they're tagged as a prospect. They are a prospect. They're not a customer yet. There's no exchange of funds. They're not an actual customer yet. They've just downloaded something I've created. I want to be able to track these kinds of behaviors because later on, if I release a course that is Zen based, I want to make sure anyone who ever downloaded that ebook knows about it because they're going to be the most engaged with it. That's why I also recommend being really specific with your tags. It's not enough to say downloaded ebook because over the next year you're going to launch a lot of them. And if you can't determine which ebook they were interested in or which one they went for, it's really hard to segment later. So we're always trying to think forward when it comes to our tagging and how we categorize people so we can get to their information a lot more easily later on. So just to talk you through what else we've got here and what you can do, if you're looking at timers, we have a date timer. Now, the great thing with the date timer is we're able to trigger based on a specific date. So if you're running a five-day challenge or if you're going to let's see, you want to put your Black Friday or your Cyber Monday or Valentine's Day or Mother's Day promotion scheduled in advance. Maybe you spend the first month of the year planning out all your marketing and you just want to have these scheduled for the year or the quarter. You can have things trigger on a specific date. So it doesn't matter how far in the future you create it, it's going to trigger on the date you want it to. So you would choose your date or you can run it as a series and it can start whenever. So say we want something to start on the 1st of June. Maybe it's the end of financial year program. You want to tell everyone, you know, if you, with all the government bonuses, if you invest in this now, then, you know, you'll be able to claim it back, something like that. And we want it to run at a specific time. Now, open rates typically are highest at 10.30 in the morning on a Tuesday. But I also find engagement, for us at least, is a lot higher, about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So it depends on how you want to do it. Um, but you can choose a specific date and time or you can run it at any time on that date. It doesn't matter. But I think if you're going to the effort of planning that far ahead, choose a good open time. So maybe we say it's 10.30 in the morning on that date and we're going to use the contacts time zone. So it doesn't matter if they're in England, the US, New Zealand, Australia, Wherever they are, they'll get it at 10.30 in the morning. Another is we have a field timer. So this might be really useful if you're collecting birthdays, but also if you pipe in your schedule once or Calendly and you're bringing in the appointment date and time as a custom field, you can 
do it from there. So, for example, three days before someone's birthday, next occurrence, because it only happens once a year, at 8 a.m., we're going to send somebody oops, an email with a voucher that they can spend because it's their birthday. Or three days before the person's consultation, we want to send reminder emails, maybe a text message, which we can do using a tool called SMS broadcast, and remind them of that appointment. This is really useful in reducing your no-shows. So maybe someone books a consultation and then three days before you just want to make sure that they get reminded and then a day before and then an hour before. So there's a lot we can do with these timers here. Let me just check on you guys. Okay, I've got some questions. Awesome. Okay. What does it mean to apply a tag? Thanks, Vera. So applying a tag is how in your list of contacts we're able to decide or segment who a specific tag is or what they're interested in. An example might be that they come through and they're interested in, well, let's break it down for us. Some clients like done for you work. They want the work done for them. They don't want to think about it. They just want to pay someone to do it. Others want one-on-one -on -one coaching. So they want to sit in a conversation like this and we work one-on-one -on -one and we build together. And the others are mostly interested in things like keep training like this. So for me to know from my list of contacts, and some of you have really big lists, some of you had smaller lists, but say you have a list of a thousand people, you don't always want to be emailing everybody about things because you know that maybe only a third of your list are actually really interested in that thing. So by applying tags, by tagging them as having performed a specific function, having been interested in a specific thing, or having read a specific email, we can segment those groups down so we're only marketing to those people specifically. Does that make sense? It's a way of categorizing our list in a way that's more obvious for us. So when we're marketing, we only have to market things to the right people. For example, in another community, maybe, um, let me think of an example. Okay, food delivery. If you are someone who orders food delivery regularly from a place where they cook homemade food, if you're vegan, you don't want to be promoted paleo and keto meals every week because you're keto, uh, you're vegan, so you're not interested. You just want to hear about what vegan offers they have. Don't bother me with keto. Don't bother me with paleo. I eat vegan. So I only want to hear about vegan things. And if you keep emailing me about keto, I'm going to get really annoyed because I've told you multiple times I don't want to hear about that. And yes, you can have multiple, you can have as many tags as you like. So what we try to do is kind of have a tagging system of tagging people based on behaviors. So maybe it's the people who open your emails the most, you know, are going to be the most receptive to your newsletter. But they might also be interested in three different categories of your business. It doesn't matter. They get their tags by moving through specific campaigns. You can manually tag people. So maybe you've had a consultation with someone and they don't want to hear from you for six months. So you tag them as you re-engage them in six months. Or if you want to um, tag them as someone not to talk to anymore, we all have those, then you might tag them as a do not touch client. This is someone we're not going to engage with anymore. Does that make sense, Vera? So we can have multiple tags and multiple categories, yes. And Heather, so you find the timers within the sequences. So if we go into our campaign builder, and this is another confusing thing is that the pages look the same. So it's not always easy to tell if you're in a sequence or if you're not. We can just always go back until there's an X. If there's an X, you're on the first page. So in your sequence is where you find your timers and they're here along the top. The communications we can manage from within Keep Pro and Infusionsoft is email. However, there are ways to integrate ManyChat if you're wanting to send out ManyChat bot messages 
And if you're wanting to send out text messages using to, there's either SMS broadcast, which we've just set up ourselves and I found it really easy and it's an Australian company, or there's also Fix My Funnel, which you can use for text messages. And then there's processes. This is how we can automate the things that go on inside of our business to make things a lot easier. So if someone has requested the ebook and they haven't, um, what's an example, they haven't scheduled a call or we've taken them through a process where they haven't made their payment on time, then we want to maybe create a task. And so what that task will do is it will tell one of the users in our Infusionsoft account, so that might be yourself or your VA or whoever's working in your account, that they need to call this client and find out what's going on. So say we want to call first name, and this is using merge fields. Basically, we can personalize these. So regardless of who the person is in the campaign, we'll always know their name and we can click on it to get into their um, contact record when we need to. And we might say, please call first name to chase up recent invoice as payment is now overdue. Um, and or we could create it to the point that we've reminded them by email, text message, and now we need to cancel their subscription. So this might say, instead of please call, we might say, please cancel first names, subscription, and remove logins. Something like that. So we can start managing what's happening within our business from here as well without having to manually think of these things all the time. We would assign it to the contact owner, so the person who owns that contact, or if you have a VA who manages these things, you would assign it to them. It's due in two days, so we want the reminder to go out and they have two days to action it. It's due at close of business, so we might say 5 p.m. It's essential, but probably not critical. If it's a $30 subscription, it can be cancelled at any time, um, provided it's done within the next two days. It's not a big deal. But if this was an ongoing client that your whole team is putting hours and hours of work into and they're, they're paying late consistently, this might be critical because you're spending hours and you're having to pay staff for work that's not being finished or not being paid for. We can notify a user via email and we can set up a pop-up that will pop up in their Keep or Infusionsoft account, reminding them to do this task. So as you can see, we can automate parts of our internal processes that have nothing to do with the client. And then we have a tag goal out here. So for example, when the person completes the task, that will trigger the next step of things. Maybe it's an email sequence saying, your campaign, your subscription has now been cancelled. If you'd like to rejoin, then you can do so through this link or something like that. So again, if is here and then anything that happens after is in our sequence. The others are here like creating an appointment. A lot of these are quite, um, you won't use a lot of these. The ones you're going to use the most are applying a tag Maybe you want to apply a note to the contact record. You may create tasks, but that's a, getting a little bit more advanced. You may not start there. Creating an appointment for someone. The other one you will use, I'm just going to talk about a little bit, but I don't want to get too techy here. So we're trying to keep it a bit chilled out today so it's not too overwhelming. But you will use this if you use a Learn Dash portal and you use Membarium. You will need HTTP posts. So let's delete all of these. And remember, this replay is going to be available. You can get it on YouTube. You can get it on the Facebook group as well. So you're going to have access to this to watch it back. So as you get to different stages, you're like, now I want to play with notes, you understand what you're doing or tasks. So let's say, for example, we need to send login details to somebody who's now a member of your program. So they've bought through your funnel. And let me just check on you guys first, just one second. OK, 
Okay, good. No more questions. Okay. So you've someone's downloaded the ebook, which is what happened in that previous screen. So we'll go through the flow again. They've downloaded your ebook either through submitting a keep landing page or a web form, which is ClickFunnels. And yes, you can have multiple goals triggering sequences as well. So they might come in through, through different, two different places. They may also come in through your WordPress. So say there's three ways people can come in. Once they get in there, they've requested the ebook or they've purchased. So let's delete these. We'll play with the purchase one. So they've bought your course. And now we want to make sure they get their logins. They need to be able to get into your Learn Dash portal. So we might create a welcome email. And hi there, welcome to the Zen project. In this project or in this program, we're going to teach you X, Y, Z. To get the most out of your program, these are the five things we recommend you do each time. Show up on time, bring a pen and paper, um, things like that. Then we're going to tag them that they are now a member of that program. So we would delete, we would create a new tag and we're going to call it Zen Program Member Create. And now they're a customer because they've purchased from us. They've spent money with our business. Now what we need to do, because that tag has been created, we need to send an HTTP post. Now we've got a really specific training on this in the Keep Training Group. So um, this is something it takes a lot longer to cover than the time I can give it now. But basically we're taking the data that Memberium is going to give us, which is our post URL. We're going to take the username and we're going to create a password here in this HTTP post. All this is doing is completing a form somewhere else. So the URL might lead Infusionsoft or Keep Pro to the Memberium page, which will put in the person's name and generate them a password. And then we follow that with another email that will contain the password and the username for the person. So now they've purchased, they've received a welcome email, and they've been emailed their logins as well. Now this one's a little bit tricky. It needs its own video. So we, yeah, it's not going to apply to all of you, but if you're using Memberium, you will use HTTP post. So from here, the ones you're going to use the most are the delay timer, the email, applying tags, applying notes, and sending an HTTP post. Now, some other tricks to make Campaign Builder easier to use is, for example, like a lot of you, I have to jump in and out of Campaign Builder quite often. So what I mean by that is I'll set aside an hour to go into the system and I'm going to start building all this out. But I think it's going to take me an hour and it's going to take me more like three. So I have to leave halfway through. Now it's easy to tell which steps we've completed because they're green but I can't remember if I've written this email or I have written the email, but I haven't put in the link I need to. So how am I going to remember which parts I haven't finished yet? We're going to use notes. This is a godsend. Hayley, you wrote the email, but you haven't added the links yet. So don't make it ready yet. Because if I have to leave this and I can't get back to it for two weeks, I don't want to have to check every single step and figure out where I'm up to because it gets very frustrating. You can use notes for everything. You can use notes for links. So you can just have all your links in one place here so you can put them in the email quite quickly. Um, I also highly recommend naming your steps. So instead of it just saying email, we know it's a welcome email. Instead of applying one tag, we're actually going to rename this. If it's going to let me, it used to. No, it's not going to, but that's all right. We want to make sure this email is sent 
logins. So you can understand the flow of what you've built just by looking at it without having to open every step up and understand what's going on. And the same here. So in this sequence, we're going to send welcome email and logins. And we would name this, for example, onboarding Zen program members. So that when we look at our list of campaigns, we also know which campaign is managing which part of the step. And I highly recommend having each thing in its own campaign. So I've seen a lot of campaigns over the years where people have just built everything for one funnel in one campaign. And it gets very busy very quickly and it's hard to manage. Where if you know this is the campaign where we send the logins. So if there's a problem with that part of the step, you don't need to check the whole campaign. You just check this part. Or what's another example? Not everyone who downloads your ebook is going to become a member. And you may have five different programs you offer to someone who downloads a specific type of ebook. So maybe people who download your Zen ebook are not just interested in the Zen program. They might also just be interested in your 10 minute meditation course or your 15 minute mindfulness practice. So not every ebook is going to have one specific offer attached to it. So we like to keep them separate. So even if it just looks like this and you're like, but someone else gave me a campaign and it had a million things in there. Well, that's great. There are times and places for that where we need to have some series of things happening all at once. But if you're just starting and you just want to get your ebook out or just want to get your login sent, it's okay if your campaign is this simple. There's no problem with that. Now, something I promised to show you again was the, in the email build out here. And just because there's a few key things here that are useful for anyone. And if we're using Keep Pro or Infusionsoft, we're going to use the same builder. So the first time you log in here, it's going to show you a different email screen. It looks very basic, but we're going to click on choose advanced builder. Not the basic one, it's useless. Well, it's not useless, you just can't do much with it. And so in this email, say we want to send out our ebook, we're just going to choose a basic text one. So we've got the simple text, you use template. And this is the email builder, whether you use Keep Pro or Infusionsoft, whether you're doing a broadcast or you're building a campaign, it's always going to be the same. And the things we want to make sure we have correct are that the contact owner is not what we've set as the from address. The reason for that is if you are using a VA service or you have someone in your business, an assistant, or you get stuck one day and I upload your contacts or a certified partner from Keep does, you don't want your emails going out from their email address. You want it to come out from yours. So we're always going to set this to the right email address. So here it might be my name. And the email would be hello at Liberate. So now I know no matter who moves through this campaign, they're going to get my email address as the one who sent it, not whoever, not the admin, not the VA, not that random keep partner who was in my account for five minutes. We want to make sure it's done correctly. The two when you're doing campaigns is always just email. This is the custom field built into keep of or the field built into keep of the email address of the person in your sequence. And then we just create our subject line. So something we haven't talked about too much is merge fields, but it's just like when we used to do mail merge in Microsoft Word, you know, you'd put the first name, last name, and then it would populate that person's details from the database. Database, God, that was very American, wasn't it? Um, so we're going to go first name. Um, I don't know, it's time to get this in. Not my best work, but it's okay. So we've got it personalized. We can put a preview text. So this is how we don't always see the HTML jargon or junk in the inbox. We can just see the preview. So we can put anything we like, or we can just copy and paste the first line of the email and put it in here. But it's good to put something that helps people open it. So another one is 
be sure to get your free dot dot. I mean, you can open it. You want to find out what's free. So it helps with open rates as well. Then we create our email here. We can drag across an image. Oh, it's an old logo. We can drag across a video. Now, the video won't actually be a video in your email. It's just the link. It'll show the thumbnail and they need to click on it to go watch it somewhere else. So if you're worried about your emails being too heavy with stuff, it, it won't do that. It's just going to put a thumbnail. But keep in mind, every link you put, the server will treat as a separate link. Even if it's the same link 10 times, the server will think they're separate links. And the more links you have, the lower your deliverability is. And what I mean by that is it's harder for you to hit the main inbox. You're going to more likely hit people's promotions tabs, you know, in Gmail where it separates it. So we're kind of aiming for main inbox as often as possible which is why I start with plain text always and then just build it out how I need to. But what I wanted to show you mainly here is for sending out your lead magnet, the best way to do it. So your button text might be, get my copy of the Zen guide, whatever it is. And we're going to change the color to something a bit brighter. And now instead of putting a URL to somewhere else, we can actually just attach the ebook here as a file. So we do file download. We can upload the ebook here and even apply another tag here saying that they downloaded it. They so downloaded Zen ebook, done. So either way, regardless of where they come in, they're getting tagged as having downloaded that book. So in a year, if I launch the Zen program, my new signature course, I want to be able to find every person who downloaded this, regardless of how they got in here. Does that all make sense? Great, Bonnie. Bonnie, okay, so I know a few, actually, I think probably most of you have come in through Grace. So if you've come in through a program where you're being given campaigns, they're not always going to look like that, no. They will be read exactly the same way. You read them left to right. Try to take it slow because they're big. There's a lot in there. Um, and what they're doing is essentially taking the main one I can think of, the scariest one, is the post and pre-consult. So essentially it's going to show people how or it's going to allow you to track who didn't book a consult, who didn't fill out their application form, if they didn't fill it out, are we going to kick them out of the program or we're we not going to give them a consultation? Um, it will have reminders to remind them. So maybe that will be quite useful for you to have a look at. Let me try and bring up a scary one. Give me one second. Oh, have I got one in this account? All right. Let me find one in my other account. Give me one second. I'll find you a scary one. And we can walk through it left to right. Because it can be overwhelming the first time, let's be honest. And I think if we're looking at a campaign someone's given us to help us, we want it to be helpful. We don't want it to scare us. So I'll show you, and I'll be completely transparent, this is our pre and post consult, which is based off of ones from Grace Lever and other people as well. Um, so let me show you this one, which will look quite scary the first time. Um, and only parts of it are actually finished because that's me. What is it they say that um, cleaners have the dirtiest houses? Okay, let me just put this in its own window. Give me one second. Okay, so if I share my screen, let's just see if you can see what I'm looking at here. There we go. All right, just give me a one if you can see when it pops up. Um, Amy, so, yeah, if it's already set up, then you need to replace it. So you would have to delete the email and create a new one. If they're basic text or text already from a template, you can drag and drop in your images like I just showed you. Um, but if it's from... If it's already there and you want a different template altogether, you would need to delete it and start again. Yes. Okay. 
Let me just zoom in on this, guys, because I think it's still a little bit too small. One second. Has this been helpful so far? I'm hoping I'm not making it even more overwhelming for you because I know the first time you get in here, it's a challenge. So I just want to make sure I'm not making anything worse. <laughs> also, another basic tip um, to move your whole campaign, you use the, right, the left mouse clicker, you hold it down and you drag. And then you can zoom in and out by using control minus and control plus. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. Can you all see that? And yes, Bonnie, yep, there's a replay, so you can watch it back as many times as you like. Excellent. Okay. So if we are looking at a campaign like this, this is similar to what you will get. And it is an extension of what I just showed you, but it just kind of keeps going. So if we read it left to right, and this is the system I use, if you book a call with me, you'll go through this system. Um, except I'm not very good at kicking people off the calendar. <laughs> so we go through the consult. So you've scheduled through schedule once, but in keep, you would schedule through keep appointments. You may have scheduled through that and I've sent you and asked you nicely to complete an application form. So we understand if you're a good fit, if you have um, keep, if you have Infusionsoft, where you came from. So some of you come in through Kerwin Ray, some through Grace, some through all different places. And I want to know where you came from because the way we work together will be different because some of you like um, Bonnie, Heather, you guys all asked me, you know, if you have Grace's campaigns, how how would that be different? We work differently than if you are someone who's come from a, a group where maybe there's no automation training. So it's all brand, brand, brand new. So we asked you to fill out an application form. And Amy, yes, you absolutely can create, create your own template. Yes, you can. You do that in there. So once you've created an email you love, and guys, this works for all of you in either the broadcast area or in the campaign builder, once you love that email template, you click save as template. And you can always use the same one again and again. We do it for our newsletter because it's just too annoying to rebuild it every single time. Um, so if we were to read this left to right, you go to on the left, you would say they've scheduled a consult, they've got, they haven't completed the application form. So we're going to remind them in this sequence. So let me just go to the right screen. Sorry, guys. In this sequence, we're going to remind them that they need to actually fill out the application form. Now, when they do, as you can see, this tag or this goal is on the right side of this campaign. So the second they finish this application, it's going to pull them out. We're not going to ask them again because they've done it. But if they don't fill it out, we will cancel the appointment. When you get to high volume in your business, particularly if you're selling via consultation, you will prioritize speaking to people who do the things you ask. So it may be just filling out a very simple form, but you need that information to help them. And you're also testing, are they action takers? Are they going to do the things you're asking? Because at a very basic level, if you're coaching or a consultant, you want to work with people who trust your expertise and are going to move through the processes you set up for them. So if they don't complete the application form, the call is going to be cancelled. It doesn't mean they don't stay in your business. They stay there. They're still a lead. They just may need to be encouraged that if they're going to book again, they need to fill out the form so we have all the information to help. So they didn't fill out the form. We're going to send them three emails telling them why it was cancelled and they can book again, but they need to come back through this sequence again. If they did complete the application form, we can actually decide now are they a good fit or not. Well, if they've said they're not in a position to invest or they're not in a position to um, work one-on-one -on -one with somebody or whatever your parameters are that you've defined basically saying this is a no deal customer for me or this is a no-brainer I want to work with this kind of person if they answer the questions correctly or what you consider correctly then they're going through to having their application accepted and now we're just going to remind them to show up for the call but if they answered with a question that you considered not to be a good fit then they will be moved into their own sequence of 
Unfortunately, because of this answer and because of our volume of clients, we can only work with people who meet these requirements and you're not a good fit at this point. But maybe in six months, it'll be worth having a chat again. In the meantime, here's some really great resources that you might find useful. Or here's a different program. Or here's a low-cost offer that doesn't require an hour of my time to talk you through something when I know 100% you're not going to work with me. You just need a $47 course or something like that. Now, something we didn't touch on is these little things (laughs) here. Personally, I love these, but most of you are going to really struggle at the very beginning just because it takes a little bit more of that automation thinking we talked about. So it's those if and then rules. So if someone fills out an application, how does Keep know if they answer correctly or incorrectly? That's what the decision diamond does. So, and you'll get this pretty much exact campaign if you're from Grace. So, um and if, if some of you don't have it and you want our version of it, just let me know. I can drop it in your account for you as well. But basically, if the contacts custom fields, so if in that web form they said that they're not ready yet to invest in automation, then obviously we're going to say it's probably not a good time for us to spend an hour on the phone together then for yourself and for myself because there's not really going to be much coming out of this conversation right now. So how about you go through our frequently asked question videos or you go through our program and then we'll see if we're a good fit later. So if then, if they say they are ready or they're not sure because they don't know how much the investment is, which is common, then it's going to like say where to put them. So if they completed it and they said they're not ready, they're going to go into the sequence called app completed no resources or if they said yes they're going to go into app accepted and so after you can see app accepted and app completed no resources so how this looks in practice is if you have a web form so this is your application form and you want to separate those people who are a good fit or not a good fit based on their answers How do you think we get the decision diamond? So the way it works is we connect this to both. And so now it's going to create a diamond because it needs to know how to base the response. How do I know which one goes into which? And so we do that with the decision diamond and that's what these are here. So say we have our consultation and I'm on the call with them And in the call, we decide that they're going to move forward with one specific thing. Then I can tick a box saying, yes, they want that. And it will move them into the right email campaign after that to onboard them. So it will send them the onboarding documents. It will send them where to make their payment if they didn't pay over the phone, all those kinds of things. So when it comes to campaigns like this, it's just really important to remember to read left to right, top to bottom. So follow the arrows and try to understand what it is you're looking at. At the beginning, as I said, it is overwhelming. But if you take it step by step and you think if then, if they schedule a consult, we're going to remind them to fill out the application form. But if we get to the end and they haven't filled it out, we're going to cancel it. If they do fill it out in time, we're going to pull them out of this sequence. And then to determine if they're going to stay on the calendar We're going to base that based on the responses they gave us. So app accepted or app um, incomplete or, sorry, the wrong answer. So the no resources or they're not ready yet. Then they're going to go, if they were accepted, they're going to be reminded to attend the call and then the call will happen. If not, we're going to cancel. That's this task. So once the person who's been assigned, so in here, they've been assigned to cancel that call, cancel the consult. Once that has been ticked as complete in your dashboard, then they're going to be sent this sequence. So it's always a matter of reading left to right and following the arrows, but it's always left to right. And this is a huge difference between Keep and Infusionsoft and ActiveCampaign, for example, which is top to bottom. 
So you're always reading top to bottom in Active Campaign. Now, I won't get too much deeper into this because it does start to get overwhelming, but I just wanted to make sure we kind of covered off all the basics so far. So here we go. Bonnie, there's no decision diamond after AppSent. How do we know we need one? So AppSent, that comes from them completing it in the funnel. So if someone goes through your funnel after the calendar, there's an application form and they need to fill it out. If they don't fill it out, we'll know because if they do, they'll get pulled out straight away because that application will have been submitted. Okay, Lynette, how do I automatically tag those that haven't opened their emails? Hi, oh, I can record your answer specifically here, Lynette. So once you have done this um, and set this up, if you are tagging, you can only tag those who opened the emails, not those who didn't, unfortunately. So I guess you could look at your overall numbers and go who, who clicked and who didn't, but you can't actually tag them specifically. Great. So let's have a look. Yeah, if you're getting these from Grace, you don't even have to get them from the projects. If you're a Doers in a Circle member, you just ask for them on the same page where my information is. So if you go into resources and links, on that page, there's a list of campaigns you can get and then instructions on how to get them. Excellent. I think a lot of you are from Grace anyway, but I just like to keep it generic because not everyone is. So excellent. Well, I hope that was helpful, everyone. Um, you'll see some links down the bottom. For those of you that aren't using any automation tools yet, there's a free trial for Keep Pro. Um, you can jump on that anytime. Also, just letting you know that if you do sign up for Keep Pro or Infusionsoft um, this month, the first month is free. So if it's something you've been toying with and you just want to sit on it for another month until you're ready and not pay for the first month, um, then you can absolutely do that as well. And if you're looking at Keep Training or more training like this every day where you can ask these questions specifically daily, that's where our key pro training lives as well, but I'm not going to do any hard sales. You guys know what I do. You know where I am. So if there's anything else I can help you with. I'm losing my voice a little bit. Um, <laughs> Excellent. You're welcome. I'm really glad you guys were here, ladies. You, it makes it a lot more enjoyable for me too when you ask questions. It's great. So thank you. Um, if you guys have any ideas for what you would like to see next or what would be really useful for you next time, please always shoot those through more important to me that I give you content worth watching if I'm going to spend an hour with you like this I want it to be useful so if there's something you guys are getting really stuck on maybe it is the Memberium connection then that's what we could look at next just let me know um, and I'll pop this out so you can get the replay for this just through your email you're going to receive an email probably in the next half an hour that tells you where to re-register and watch this again um, and but I also pop them on YouTube as well and in the keep training group so you can grab them there too well, my voice is leaving me, so I'm going to go. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. I've really enjoyed um, having this session with you guys. And as I said, pop through any other ideas as well. Um, Priscilla, hooking up Mimbarium and their tags are different to the ones you did. So confusing which ones to use. Yeah, it is very custom based on what you're selling or what you're offering. So if you have a free level or you have, you know, you might have three different levels, gold, bronze, silver, something like that. It is very customized to how you are actually using the tool um, or what your program offers are. So a lot of people don't offer an ebook at the front like what we went through here. Plenty do, but some offer a free lesson, which is hosted in your Learn Dash portal. So then that needs its own tag to trigger the free membership over the paid levels of membership. So it does vary depending on where you're up to. Um, and what you're doing. So we can go into that in more depth in another webinar, I think. We could probably spend easily an hour just on Memberium itself. So excellent. Thanks for joining me and grab the replay. Watch it as many times as you need to. And I'm always here if you have any questions.